to torpedo the Obama project. These friends say Mr. Netanyahu thinks Mr. Obama's presidency has been characterized by moving closer to the Muslim Brotherhood, toppling the regime of Hosni Mubarak, and by attempts to ally himself with political Islam. Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, who stepped down last year as a UN representative to the Middle East Quartet of Special Mediators from the US, EU, and Russia, is now on the United Nations list of candidates, along with former United States President Bill Clinton, who has been drooling over the United Nations Secretary General position for well over 10 years. The latest candidate to long for greener totalitarian pastures is German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Under heavy fire for the glaring rape of Germany by hordes of protected jihadist refugees, Merkel now says that she does not want to complete her full term as German Chancellor and is planning to resign before elections due in 2017. The German leader is aiming to become the first Chancellor to leave of her own accord since 1949 and is interested in a new role as United Nations Secretary General or President of the EU, Spiegel magazine reported. The global banker's stooge, the United Nations General Assembly installs, will join the ranks of past UN Secretary Generals, including Nazi war criminal Kurt Waldheim and Egypt's Boutros Boutros Ghali, the man responsible for supplying weapons for the 1994 Rwanda genocide. As the clock ticks nearer to midnight, John Bound for Infowars.com. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you can get six months free at PrisonPlanet.tv, but only for one more week. Next Monday, the special that only comes around once a year ends. In fact, we've never offered six months free before, but I really want to get more people to join and to be able to watch the nightly news, to see the live reports we do, the special reports, all my films, ebooks, and so much more. One person can share their membership with 20 people, and you are funding the absolute very leading edge, the vanguard of the resistance to the globalist operation on every front. We have to have our own platform that is harder for them to censor, harder for the system to shut down. PrisonPlanet.tv. We put out the daily radio show free with the video and audio feeds at Infowars.com forward slash show. But it is the members that get the nightly news exclusively and first and the commercial free video podcasts and audio podcasts that are paying it forward and financing and helping so many other people see the truth when we put the videos on Facebook, YouTube, and it's PrisonPlanet.tv that finances so much of the cameras, the equipment, the crew. The reporters, you are becoming a PrisonPlanet.tv member. You get exclusive HD, higher quality, get it first. And then you can download it, share it with friends and family, share your passcode with them, your username. It's a win-win. And then you're helping finance to put it out for free to everybody. PrisonPlanet.tv. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water. Save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. Welcome back. Now, today is Martin Luther King Day. And of course, how do liberals respond? We see them trying to inflame white privilege, white guilt. Uh, we have an editorial today from USA Today saying whites killed Martin Luther King. But now we honor him. And they say centuries of kidnapping, torture, murder and rape. We killed him. Not me, of course. I'm not a racist. But who thinks that he is? Well, here's a newsflash. Uh, I didn't have any slaves. Uh, my parents, grandparents, great-grandparents didn't have any slaves. This is guilt by association, but more importantly, what this is, is an attempt to fan the flames of division rather than looking at who really killed Martin Luther King. And of course, that would be the government. And that's the tactic that the government likes to take. This article from Activist Post points out the FBI and Memphis police finally admit their involvement in the assassination of Martin Luther King. They say nearly 50 years since the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the FBI and Memphis Police Department have sparingly released information implicating themselves or members of their agency in facilitating and directly causing the untimely death of Dr. King. A civil suit later determined that a Memphis cop was involved in a conspiracy 
to murder the civil rights leader. And we're going to play an excerpt uh, of someone who is involved in that civil suit later. But first, they point out, since revealing its illegal COINTELPRO harassment of Dr. King and the existence of at least five paid informants who reported to their Memphis field office, the FBI also disclosed that Dr. King's trusted friend and renowned photographer Ernest Withers had been secretly working as an FBI informant. Now, in 1999, a civil trial, King versus Jowers, determined former Memphis police officer Lloyd Jowers had been complicit in a conspiracy to assassinate Dr. King. In December 1993, Jowers appeared on ABC's Primetime Live, confessed to his participation in Dr. King's assassination. Jowers admitted that he believed Memphis Police Department Lieutenant Earl Clark fired the shots that killed Dr. King, not James Earl Ray. But of course, we don't want to actually look at who really did it. We don't want to look at the government's involvement in this. Instead, what we want to do is blame all white people and push this white uh, privilege agenda so we can divide people. Now, for those of you who are InfoWars listeners, this is not a uh, new thing. This is something we covered a long time ago. As a matter of fact, Leanne McAdoo talked about this in her very first report when she joined InfoWars. And right after this, we're going to play an interview that I had with Dr. Pepper, who was involved in that lawsuit. Hello, I'm Leanne McAdoo with an InfoWars News Bulletin. The term conspiracy theory is being used by the mainstream media to discredit genuine concerns citizens may have surrounding political events. Well, folks, if you find that your questions are being answered with facts, it's not a theory at all. It's a conspiracy. Today is the perfect day to draw attention to one conspiracy in particular. On this day, April 4, 1968, the government played part in a secret plan to assassinate the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now, that's not my zany conclusion, but according to our legal system, that's a fact. In 1999, in Shelby County, Tennessee, Lloyd Jowers was tried before a jury of his peers on the charge of conspiring to kill Dr. King. Conspiracy with agents of the city of Memphis and the governments of the state of Tennessee and the United States of America. We ask you to find that conspiracy existed. It only took the jury two hours to reach their verdict. Lloyd Jowers and others, including governmental agencies, were parties to this conspiracy. Just days after the trial ended, media outlets like the New York Times seemingly attempted to sway public opinion by dismissing the verdict, saying the evidence presented was sometimes contradictory and confusing, as most secret plans often are. But in America, where the law of the land is trial by jury, even if you feel that the jury has made a mistake, the verdict stands. Of course, you can challenge it, but so far no one has come forward to challenge the verdict in a court of law. For more information on this conspiracy and others, visit the InfoWars store and pick up a copy of Dead Wrong by Richard Belzer and David Wayne. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and this has been an InfoWars News Bulletin. Well, our guest for tonight is Dr. William Pepper. Dr. Pepper has been involved in cases of the assassination of Martin Luther King, as well as Robert Kennedy. As a matter of fact, he's trying to get a case for Sirhan Sirhan reopened based on new evidence that's come to light in the last 10 years. Dr. Pepper is with us right now. Dr. Pepper, thank you for coming on and talking to us about these cases. Okay, it's good to be with you. It's always important to follow the story wherever it leads. And you followed this case for the Martin Luther King assassination for about 10 years before you had the retrial. It was actually a, a mock trial. Tell us what the conclusion was of that trial. Well, uh, the retrial, um, we, we, brought a, we brought a civil action. Um, I brought a civil action on behalf of the King family against Lloyd Jowers and others who were involved in the assassination of Martin King. Um, the, the trial was an actual trial, civil trial, with a jury and a judge in Memphis, Tennessee. Went on for, um, oh, 30 days. Over 70 witnesses testified. And all of the evidence was laid out as to how Martin was killed and why he was killed. And, and so the King, it, it enabled the King family finally to have closure in mm -hmm. terms of that 
that that that situation it took the jury 59 minutes after hearing testimony over 30 days. It took them 59 minutes to come back um, with a, a a verdict finding Jowers and the defendants. And we had we had named unnamed members of uh, federal, state, and local <laughs> government who were involved um, uh, as as being responsible for the killing of Martin King, and and with no responsibility for James Earl Ray. Mm. So, and, and a lot of vindication for for James a year <laughs> after his death. He died mm-hmm. in 1998. Tell us what they who they found were responsible. Yeah, they believed that, that it was a, a, a wide-ranging conspiracy, and and on the basis of the evidence that came up, that uh, he was killed by a a, uh, a single uh, shot fired by a sniper uh, who was in the bushes behind the uh, cafe called Jim's Grill, was owned by the principal defendant, Lloyd Jowers. Jowers had admitted that uh, he he played a role in the assassination of Martin King, and um, uh, so there wasn't much much question about that. Um, there was a military team there, Alpha 184 team there, and, and they were backups. They did not kill Martin King. Martin was killed by a a, a lone contract gunman who who uh, got off that shot. Now, if he had not been successful, uh, the military unit was there to. Uh, to make sure that Martin was hit. They were, they were not going to wow. ever let him leave Memphis because he was going to bring half a million people to Washington wow. and, and this, the poor people's march and campaign. They were not going to march. Or, they were going to stay there mm-hmm. and um, visit their congressmen and senators and press for a return to, uh, for funding for social programs. So they weren't, they, they, the military knew they didn't have the forces to contain a, a mob of that size mm-hmm. if it got out of hand and they were likely to get out of hand because they were likely to be frustrated in their request. Right. So they had to stop King. That was, that was wow. their logic and, and they did. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. MLK's knee slams Black Lives Matter protesters. I'm thinking some people don't even remember Martin Luther King and what he stood for, said King during an appearance on the Alex Jones Show, referring to the recent interruption of Bernie Sanders' campaign event by Black Lives Matter protesters. Of course Black Lives Matter. All lives matter. They don't even know that it's disrespectful to go to a meeting and jump into people's faces and scream Black Lives Matter. But no one has taught them to articulate a need and because they don't know how, they're doing it inappropriately, she said. Asked what was happening behind the scenes, King remarked, you wonder, who's kind of behind the movement? Who's paying them? Adding that the political campaign she was involved in paid people to hold signs and attend rallies. Earlier this year, it was reported that George Soros had donated around $33 million in one year to groups affiliated with Black Lives Matter activism. You can find more reports like this at Infowars.com. Just remember that when USA Today sells the idea that it was white people in general that killed Dr. Martin Luther King, he said, Dr. Martin Luther King said, when evil men plot, good men must plan. And when we look at Black Lives Matter promoting violence and division, we need to understand that he also said, when evil men burn and bomb, good men must build and bind. Join us again tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern for the InfoWars Nightly News. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these and it just is really clean restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. 
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.